Have you ever seen a postcard or a travel book with one of these on it? This is called a Tori gate and is a characteristic symbol of Shinto or Shintoism. Now, there are a lot of videos on YouTube and the internet that talks about Shinto and describes it as Japan's native religion, or sometimes also as a religion that's based somehow on nature worship. But most modern scholarship suggests that these ideas are wrong or at least partly misguided. But what is Shinto and how can it be properly understood? The word Shinto isn't perhaps something that a lot of people are familiar with, but the outer expressions of this tradition probably hasn't escaped anyone who has ever come into contact with uh, sort of media surrounding Japan in some way. The tori gates, the shrines, the priests, the rituals, it's all a very common sight in any kind of media surrounding the country of Japan. Shinto literally means way of the gods, shin meaning god or deity, and to meaning way, being basically the same word as the Chinese Tao from Taoism. Um, it is today used to designate certain religious beliefs and practices in Japan that are distinct from Buddhism, the so-called other major religion in the region. But this distinction would have been a foreign concept to people in earlier periods of history. And this is where the first and main problem arises, which makes it difficult to talk about the basic principles of Shinto. The idea of Shinto as a separate and distinct religion is in fact a rather new idea, one that stretches back primarily to the 19th century and the appearance of the Meiji period and its reforms. Prior to this, the connection between Shinto and Buddhism was a lot closer than what is often imagined today, being basically indistinguishable from each other. In any case, the basic tenets of Shinto as we know it are related primarily to shrines, rituals and certain myths. A central idea is Shinto is something known as Kami, which is often translated as gods or spirits, none of which really captures its actual meaning, but it does have similarities with ideas of deities we find in other polytheistic or pagan traditions, with certain Kami being associated with natural phenomena or places. These were often viewed in very human ways and seen as kind of dangerous spirits who could, for example, destroy your crops if you weren't careful. And so what happened was that priests started to perform rituals and build shrines in certain locations associated with Kami, uh, where he would perform rituals to appease the Kami in a kind of exchange uh, where the priest would give the kami what he wanted and the kami would sort of leave the people alone. This all appears to have occurred in ancient times, but without any kind of conception that this, this practice or these rituals were part of any sort of larger system of thought or, or religious tradition at all. Many of the myths surrounding these kami come from two main scriptures or sources, the Kojiki and the Nihon Shoki, both composed in the 8th century by the new ruling Yamato dynasty and associated with something known as the Jingi cult. In these scriptures, many of the kami that would remain significant throughout history were introduced or at least placed within an official mythology. The most important and famous of these is probably the deity Amaterasu, viewed as the sun goddess. Amaterasu is especially important because she is directly connected to the imperial rule the emperor considered to be her direct descendant, and thus the legitimate ruler of Japan. She appears again and again throughout history with various myths surrounding her. The most famous of which is a story in which after a rivalry between her and her brother, she f sort of furiously hides in a cave. And because, of course, she is the sun goddess, that sort of plunges the world into darkness. The other gods, the other kami, are very concerned about this, and so they try to come up with some idea uh, of how they can uh, bring her out of the cave again. And so they come up with this plan where one of the gods starts dancing outside the cave and the other kami start laughing and basically just making a general party atmosphere. And this interests Amaterasu who peeks outside the cave and she is met with her own reflection because the other gods have placed a mirror in front of the opening to the cave. And so with this sort of shock of seeing herself, she exits the cave completely, after which the, the other kami closes the entrance and forces her to stay uh, outside again, which brings the sun, brings light back into the world once again. In fact, many of the myths such as this one and rituals of the Jingi cult were specifically constructed to legitimize the emperor. 
Larger shrines were then developed, like the Isa Shrine, for example, which was dedicated to Amaterasu, uh, where priests were sort of permanent employees uh, that would perform many different rituals, many of which were the specific purpose of reinforcing the emperor's connection to the sun goddess, and thus his authority was reinstated. Many of these shrines also survive today, being regularly visited by the Japanese for special occasions. The shrines function like houses for the kami, much like that of a human being, and the priests and, as we will see later, monks, make sure that the kami is satisfied and happy through different rituals. It is believed that kami can help you with certain problems or obstacles, so many visit a shrine today to pray for, for example, good results or an exam, or in preparation for a job interview, uh, and of course, a lot of people pray for less mundane things as well. The shrines are also commonly visited for special occasions like New Year celebrations and other festivals. When visiting a shrine, one first enters through the large tori gate on either the left side or the right side, never in the center. This is because the center is reserved for the kami themselves and avoided out of courtesy. Later, you must also clean yourself before approaching the shrine proper. This is done at a specific cleaning station with certain scoops that you use to ritually cleanse yourself in a very specific order. When approaching the shrine and the home of the kami, it is common to leave a gift through money. You then ring a bell to summon the god before bowing twice and then clapping twice. And then after your prayer is concluded, you bow again and then leave. It is difficult to know how long these specific practices have been in force, uh, but it is the general practice of shrine visits today. Aside from the daily rituals and offerings at these shrines, there are also larger rituals in which the entire community is involved, and these often include parades or uh, specifically, uh, very commonly, recreations of the mythical stories in the uh, Kojiki or Nihonshoki. In these rituals, the kami will be transferred from their houses in the shrines, the regular houses, and transferred into a kind of portable house called a mikoshi. And this mikoshi will then be carried around uh, to perform certain scenes or uh, parts of this mythological play. The mikoshi are very interesting because it is thought that the kami and its powers are contained within this portable house, at least for the duration that they are thought to be in there. Um, there's a fascinating example from, I think, somewhere in the Middle Ages when Buddhist monks um, sort of rebelled against the government in Kyoto and thus came down from the Hiei mountain carrying mikoshi and placed them outside the city as a means of warfare. And of course everyone in the city was terrified. Other rituals and ceremonies include what we could call theater dramatic reenactments of the myths, which took different forms, sometimes including singing and dancing, which is called kagura. There's a wealth of different practices and traditions related to Japanese religion that I can't sort of contain in this video, but I highly recommend studying it further. It is very interesting stuff. As I mentioned earlier, the sort of common idea of what Shinto is and where it comes from is somewhat of a contested issue. In a fairly recent book called A New History of Shinto, authors John Breen and Mark Tewin discuss these issues at length and shows how Shinto cannot be viewed as an independent entity for most of history. A very common way to view the history of Shinto is to conceive of this sort of ancient pure period when Shinto was in its, well, its purest form, before the interference of Buddhism and Confucianism in the Middle Ages um, that sort of contaminated it, and then finally being separated again uh, at the late 19th century and sort of regaining that original purity. But this view is almost completely rejected today. The historian of Japanese history Kuroda Toshio argues that before modern times Shinto did not exist as an independent religion, and that it should rather be viewed as a component or extension of Japanese Buddhism. Indeed, historically, aside from the imperial courts and their strategy of legitimizing their rule through establishing a cult surrounding the kami, the second important factor here is Buddhism, which was what could be called the state religion for much of Japan's history. Now remember, Buddhism and Shinto should not be viewed as two distinct traditions that merged, but Buddhism did have a large influence on what we call Shinto today. 
as Buddhism viewed the Buddha as being above the gods and the gods also being in need of seeking nirvana and liberation, its practitioners uh, simply implemented the kami cults as part and parcel of Japanese Buddhism. They developed temple shrine complexes, which contained both Buddhist temples and monasteries, as well as shrines dedicated to the kami. The Buddhist monks would read the sutras, sayings of the Buddha, to the kami in order to help them on the way to nirvana, for example. Thus, what we call Shinto was simply a unique aspect of Japanese Buddhism. In spite of the indistinguishability of Buddhism and Shinto historically, it hasn't always been a walk in the park, obviously. On some occasions, there have been conflicts between the Buddhist monks and the priests of the Kami shrines. In the late 15th to early 16th century, there was a significant change in attitude in some areas. Whereas before, the Kami had been seen as inferior beings in need of Buddhist guidance, now some were viewing the Kami as the ultimate source of all existence. This increasing importance of the kami developed further under Yoshido Kanetomo, who founded something known as one and only Shinto, in which practices referred to as Shinto was in some way intellectually separated from Buddhist practices. It is, in fact, around this time that the sh word Shinto is used for the first time as well. And this development of separating Shinto conceptually from Buddhism uh, sort of developed and evolved over time until the late 19th century with the Meiji Revolution when Shinto was officially separated from Buddhism. As in other periods, Shinto then became an imperial ideology, one meant to legitimize its rule. The idea of the sort of pure original Shinto Shinto before Buddhist influence developed thus here as a kind of nationalistic myth of a pure Japanese culture or pure Japanese mythology. So the Shinto we see today is the result of a long history of development and change. Certain aspects does date back to ancient times, but much of it is also very modern. One should remember that this is still a living tradition, and the Shinto shrines and rituals do still play a large role in the everyday lives of a lot of people in Japan. This video has to a large degree been about whether Shinto has historically been an independent religion, but this of course depends on how we define the word religion itself. Viewed from a very western and Christocentric perspective of what religion is, Shinto can't live up to those requirements for most of its history. But perhaps this more than anything shows us how fluid and undefined the term religion itself really is. The lines between Buddhism and Shinto has always been blurry and non-existent, and the situation today also kind of mirrors that. Many people in Japan consider themselves to be Buddhist, but they still visit the Shinto shrines. Even more people in Japan, perhaps, identify as atheists, and even they have a strong connection to these shrines. So, so how do we define this? Is, are, like, are they atheists? Are they Shinto? It really shows us that a lot of our terms that we understand the world with or that we use for these different religious traditions are very limited and can often create more confusion than anything else. The world of, of religious beliefs and practices in the world is a lot more complicated than we like to believe, and this is a good example of this uh, that sort of really opens your mind to the incredibly complex world of religion and the different ways in which it can manifest itself. But how would you define Shinto? Is it a religion? Or if not, then how would you define a religion? Leave a comment and we'll continue this discussion there. I'll see you next time.